Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Agit Yontef, Agit Shabbos. Let's stand. Let's sing our traditional song, Shabbat Shalom, and wish everybody a good Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom, Beit HaMashiach, and uh, welcome today to our services. It's great to have you here. There's, I don't know, a sense of excitement, a lot of activity, but it's great to be able to be here together. Let's sing that again, and then just say Shabbat Shalom to the people around you while we are singing this song one more time. Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to those online too. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shabbat. wonderful let's just pray lord we thank you so much for gathering us today and uh, we come in the name of yeshua our messiah lord we thank you that you've drawn us from all over melbourne uh, for those online too lord from uh, around the country and perhaps even overseas lord we come together in yeshua's name to worship and to pray and uh, to be in your presence so, Lord, we thank you that Yeshua, our Messiah, has made the way possible for us to be together. He is the one who has broken down that wall of division and made out of the Jew and Gentile one new man in the Messiah. Blessed be your holy name, Lord, and thank you that we gather to worship the Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. All right, let's uh, sing the Shema together. The declaration of faith that Yeshua said was the most important commandment. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha bechol lavavcha uvechol nafshecha uvechol me'odecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be for frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. And you show the Messiah said, Vahavta Larecha Kamocha. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Let's say it together. 
Yeshua HaMashiach Hu Adonai. Yeshua the Messiah is Lord. Amen. Let's worship. This is the day, this is the day that Hashem has made, that Hashem has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. This is the day that Hashem has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. Hashem has made. This is the Shabbat. This is the Shabbat that Hashem has made. That Hashem set apart. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. This is the day that Hashem has made. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day, this is the day that Hashem has made, that Hashem has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, yes, be glad in it. This is the day that Hashem has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that our God is a man. That Hashem is a man. That Hashem is a man. That Hashem is a man. Hallelujah, Adonai. Bless your holy name. We bless you, our Avinu Shabbat Shemaim, our Father in heaven. And we know that you are good. Only you are good to the humanity, Lord. When the voice is raging, Lord, you are our refuge and you are the only one who gives us chesed, your mercy, your love, your grace, Lord. You are the only one who forgives sin and we love you, Lord. Oh, <laughs> Adonai ki to ki le olam chazdo odu 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 Adonai ki to Let's raise our 
Jesus. Let's give him a shout of praise. Open your mouth and just say, oh, Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, God of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah, Lord. And we exalt your name. Oshana Bamromin Oshana 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 Bamromin Nehalel et Shemcha Belev Malay Toda Yei Shemcha Mevora
hearts be open to you, to your holy breath. Lead us to your holy mountain, into your sweet presence, Lord. For you alone are holy and anointed. And you alone who gives us the spirit of the Father, the spirit of adoption. are higher than our ways, your thoughts are higher than our thoughts, Lord. We come to you this morning, Lord, and we bow, you. We bow down in, in love and adoration for you, Lord. Lord, you lead us in paths of righteousness. Father God, you are our all in all. And Yeshua, you are the name above all names. So Lord, we I just want to uh, come to you this morning 
and just tell you that we love you, Lord. And we're here to worship you fully and completely in full and complete submission. Lord, we have strength in our weakness through you. Thank you and praise you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our liturgy this morning. It's great to see so many people out of their pajamas this morning. I can see you in there, in your pajamas, right in that camera there, right? It's a two-way camera. <laughs> well, we welcome all those online this morning, and it's great to see you. Um, we're getting people coming back from... Um, you know, some from illness, some not. We're sorry that uh, Louise isn't be able to be with us again. Through she's uh, quite a bit better, but unfortunately, um, uh, Sarah she couldn't. Uh, the, the carer for Sarah was sick, so um, Louise can't be with us today. But um, I'm sure Louise, you're watching at home, so we uh, send blessings to you and Sarah, of course, and the rest of the um, Hirsch and Bierski family this morning. So we'll continue on with our uh, our liturgy. If we can get that up on the screen, that would be great. Thank you. And uh, so let's uh, start with the Veshamru prayers. Veshamru v'nei Yisrael et ha-shabbat le'asot et ha-shabbat le'dorotam brit olam. And the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. Beni uven b'nei Yisrael ot hi le'olam ki sheshet yamim asa Adonai et ha-shamayim ve'et ha-aretz it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of the Lord your God. Let's uh, do the brachot for the sanctification of the Shabbat. Later on, uh, we'll be having the Lord's Seder. And so uh, people at home can uh, get prepared for that a little bit later on. Um, but right now we're going to uh, say the prayers for the sanctification of the Shabbat. So let's sing together. Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam, ore peri hagafen, amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. We thank the Lord for his great provision, that he... Uh, loved the children of Israel so much that he provided for them while they wandered in the desert for all those uh, 40 years and they did a little bit of grumbling and moaning and complaining yes uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we got there in the end right and we're here today and we, we endure right um, God's promises uh, for Israel endure forever and they will in eternity as well so let's sing and uh, praise God Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechem Min Aretz, Amen. Blessed are you, o Lord our God, King of the Universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. Praise God. So let's have the children up to uh, bless the children before they go out to their children's activities, the Shalom Kresh and the Shalom Kids, and we have our youth as well today upstairs. And we welcome um, Peter and Pat back out from the cold. They've had their car repaired, so they're back with us. Great to see you. And we've got some... Uh,
Okay, Shabbat Shalom everybody. We are missing you and praying for you <laughs> to get back in the movable office. Okay, let's bless our beautiful children today. Children at home, we just bless you too. May God bless you boys as he blessed Ephraim and Menasha. And may he bless you girls as he blessed Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel and Leah. Lord, thank you for the gifts of these children to our families and our community. We pray for your presence to be with them always. We pray that you would bless their bodies, their minds and their spirits. May they grow in the love and the knowledge of Yeshua our Messiah. It is in Yeshua's name we bless our children and place your name upon them. Yevarekaka Adonai Vishmareka, Ye Adonai Panavaleka Vikuneka, Yisa Adonai Panavaleka, Sem Leka Shalom, Bashem Yeshua Mishihenu. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace in the name of Yeshua our Messiah. Amen. Praise God and children can go out now to their activities or just continue sleeping. Special uh, greeting today to uh, our new granddaughter, Octavia, who our son Samuel's holding there. Not that I want to make an make a, uh, example of him, but I will. <laughs> uh, we're going to go to uh, the announcements now with a very special, beautiful guest couple. Shabbat Shalom, I'm Nicole and I help out with visuals and guitar here. And this is my husband Sean who does the more important job of looking after the kids. And these are our sons Isaac and Jarrah. So welcome to Bahamashir Community Announcements. Thank you for joining us whether here in person or watching online. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at connect at or call us on 9572 5792. If you're new here, Please feel free to join us in the dining hall after the service and make yourself known to one of the leaders. Now, here are the announcements. At the end of today's service, we're having a Lord's Seder or communion. If you are here at Hamakar's and have a gluten intolerance, we have a gluten-free matzah on the Lord's Seder table. So feel free to come and get a piece when the emblems are being distributed. The revival prayer and worship meeting is on next Saturday night. But this week, the following prayer meetings are happening as well as every week. At 11am on Tuesdays, prayer and pastoral care for women on Zoom. 10am Wednesdays, prayer, healing and worship here at Hamakaz. 6am Thursdays on Zoom. And 9.30am Shabbats here at Hamakaz. We encourage everyone to attend a Havara group, a couple in homes and a couple online. Email the connect address for more details. Celebrate Messiah together with the Messianic Training Centre is running an online course presented by Paul Cohen on the subject, bringing understanding to the book of Revelation. Paul is a Messianic Jewish Bible teacher and works with the ministry of Celebrate Messiah in Sydney, helping to lead Brit Hadashah Messianic Fellowship, a congregation planted by Celebrate Messiah. The course will run for eight one-hour sessions beginning this Wednesday, the 10th of August, 2022 at 7.30 and finishing on the 28th of September, 2022. The course will provide an in-depth overview of the book of Revelation and will examine what the entire Bible teaches about the future of Israel and the world. For more information and to register, please go to celebratemessiah.com.au slash mtc. Muzzle tov again to the following couples who recently had babies, who we now have photos of. Samuel and Belle Polonsky's daughter, Octavia Akela, born 15th of July. Simon and Lizzie Nygaard's daughter, Shana Mercy, born 29th July. Jaleel and Rebecca Schelling's son, Jethro Samuel Schelling, born 29th July. Happy birthday to our son, Jarrah, who turns three this Thursday. And happy birthday or wedding anniversary to anyone else celebrating this week. Thank you for your ongoing support of Beit HaMashiach Messianic Congregation so that we can continue to fulfill our mission of building a Messianic community of Jews and Gentiles who are a living testimony for Messiah Yeshua. 
We invite you to continue to give your tithes and offerings mm. through our BH website. Or if you are here today, mm. you can use the QR posters or the offering box mm. at the back of the sanctuary during the next song. Shabbat Shalom and Shavua Tov. <laughs>、uh, just a couple of extra announcements before we、uh, go to a song where we、uh, collect the offering.、Uh, we're needing someone、um, who comes regularly with current first aid qualifications to be our first aid officer. So, if anyone would like to take on that role,、um, we、uh, uh, Robin Daniels was doing that role before, but he he and his family have now moved to Albury.、Um, so, we need someone who regularly comes who can be、uh, the the main first aid contact. Um, so, if you want any more details about it, you can see myself or Karen, or email the connect email address connect at baithamashiach dot com. If you've committed your life to Yeshua and are wanting to be baptized by immersion,、um, we've got quite a few people recently who have expressed that desire, and so we'd like to know if there are any others who want to come forward and uh, be uh, baptized.、Um, so, if you'd like to see Rabbi Lawrence,、um, he will、uh, tell you what you.、Uh, Need to do. You have to go under water. That's one thing. I know. I know that. <laughs> But he'll tell you the rest. <laughs> But、um, yeah. So、um, for those of you who、uh, weren't here last week or didn't catch up with the news,、um, I'll just remind you. I mean, it, we were a bit overshadowed by, you know, Shana Mercy. I mean, you know, Simon and Lizzie. You couldn't wait another week to tell people. But、um, but <laughs> Heidi and I will be、um, will be leaving Melbourne.、Uh, Indefinitely, we're going to be moving up to Queensland to be closer to our family up there. So that will be happening around about the end of October. So just for those, oh yeah,、uh, I, I didn't get enough tears last week, so I'm hoping for a, <laughs> for a few more today. But、um, and of course, we're going to miss all you beautiful people here. And、um, yeah, so just to let you know.、Um, so yeah, so we're going to、uh, pray for the offering, Lord God.、Uh, Yeah, thank you so much for your provision, Lord.、Um, you know, sometimes life is very uncertain. We don't really know exactly what's around the corner, but what we do know is you go before us. There are scores of examples in in、uh, in the Bible where it's clear that you do go before in in very many situations, Lord. So we trust that you've gone before us. We trust that as we give,、uh, Lord, you go before and you know what we can afford to give, and、uh, you know. Some people are so generous and amazing that they give so faithfully and、uh, and sacrificially, and then we know, you know, many many times the Lord、um, blesses that and and provides in abundance over and, over and above. So Lord,、um, we just want to thank you and praise you this morning for everything you provide for us. And as we prepare to give、uh, some back to you, Lord, we just ask that、uh, um, you know for a blessing on on those funds so that they be used for your. Purposes that is to bring the light of Yeshua into the hearts and minds of those, particularly in our local community here in Caulfield. Lord God, we、uh, just want to thank you and praise you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you. Yes, please stand.
Bati lefanecha Lealel otcha Niflaim hem masecha Veahavatcha gdola Bati lefanecha Lealel otcha Niflaim hem masecha Veahavatcha gdola Ribon olam, niflaot in chaose, en kamocha Adonai, en kamocha Adonai. Ribon olam, niflaot in chaose, en kamocha Adonai. so great. We just love you and we worship you, Lord. You're a God who can do great things, Lord. You're a God who has done great things. And Lord, we trust in you. Lord, for those who are longing for a miracle, Lord, I pray that you do the miracle for them, Lord, in Yeshua's mighty name. Lord, I pray that you reveal yourself and your power, that Lord, you would break into people's lives who, Lord, right now are crying out to you. Lord, you are great. You do miracles so great. You are the Lord of heaven and earth. And nothing is impossible for you. And we thank you, Lord, that you love us, that you've brought us forgiveness for our sins, atonement for eternity through Yeshua, our Messiah. Blessed be your holy name. Even as the writer of Lamentation says, Remember my affliction and my wanderings, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continually remembers it and is bowed down within, within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. 
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will have, ho I will have hope in him. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. That was a scripture from Lamentations, which is traditional to read on Tisha B'Av. And Tisha B'Av is literally the ninth of Av, and that begins this evening at sunset, the ninth of Av, which is also known as the Festival of Sadness. Why does a Jewish groom break a glass under his foot at a wedding? Well, that's because even at the most happiest of occasions, like a wedding, we remember the destruction of the temple by breaking the glass. And so tonight, as uh, the Jewish community worldwide observe this festival of sadness, Tisha B'Av, which has also been known as uh, the Pearl Harbor of world Jewry or of Judaism, because we remember not just the destruction of the two great temples that happened on this date, but many other calamities have befallen our people over the centuries on this date, or very close to this date. And so Tisha B'Av, that begins this evening, is a time of mourning, mourning over the destruction of the two temples, and it also is a fast day, the second most important fast after Yom Kippur. And today, also being the Shabbat before Tisha B'Av, today is also called Shabbat Chazon, which is the Shabbat of vision or the Shabbat of prophecy. And the name of this Shabbat is uh, taken from the Haftarah portion for this week. So weekly readings are from the Torah and Haftarah, that's the other writings. And uh, tonight, uh, the, well, today the, the writings that are read for the Haftarah portion are the first few verses from Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 27, in fact. And these are pretty tough verses where Isaiah brings a pretty stinging rebuke against the Jewish people and makes a prophecy of coming judgment upon Israel because they refuse to listen to God and to his prophets and, for, uh, and did not listen to God's warning of looming disaster. Certainly, as you read the book of Isaiah, the first 39 chapters are doom and gloom, predictions of, uh, of destruction if uh, Israel doesn't repent. But then, of course, in chapter 40, there's a change of mood in Isaiah with those wonderful words, Nachamu, Nachamu Ami, comfort, comfort my people. And from then on, from chapter 40 to 66, uh, it's great hope, great expectation of the coming of the, the servant of the Lord, the Messiah, and eternal redemption for Israel and the nations. However, the reading today from the first few verses of Isaiah are pretty gloomy, and that's why today is also called the Black Sabbath in Judaism. Hence, I wore black today. Uh, you mostly find me in black or blue, don't you? Um, not black and blue, but... In, but let us read the first few verses. Uh, in fact, we're going to read a chunk of scripture from Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 20. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Listen, heavens, and hear, earth, for Adonai has spoken. Sons I have raised and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its manger, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Oi, a sinful nation, a people weighed down with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, sons dealing corruptly. They have abandoned Adonai. They have despised Israel's Holy One. They have turned backward. 
Where will you strike again as you stray away more and more? The whole head is sick, the whole heart faint. From the foot to the head there is no soundness. Wounds, bruises, and raw sores, not pressed, nor bandaged, nor softened with oil. Your land is desolate. Your cities are burnt with fire. Your fields, strangers devoured in your presence. A desolation, overthrown by strangers. So the daughter of Zion is left as a sukkah in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Unless Adonai Tseviot had left us a small remnant, we would have been as Sodom. We would have been as Gomorrah. Hear the word of Adonai, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the Torah of our God, you people of Gomorrah. For what is to me the multitude of of your sacrifices, says Adonai. I am full of burnt offerings of rams and fat of fed animals. I have no delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or he goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand, trampling my courts? Bring no more worthless offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Shabbat, the calling of convocations, I cannot endure it. Iniquity with solemn assembly. Your new moons and your festivals my soul hates. They are a burden to me. I am weary to bear them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When you multiply, multiply prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourself clean. Put away the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good, seek justice, relieve the oppressed, defend the orphan, orphan, plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says Adonai. Though your sins be like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they will become like wool. If you are willing and obey, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, You'll be devoured with sword, for the mouth of Adonai has spoken. Oi, oi, oi. That's a pretty heavy rebuke, isn't it? From the Lord upon Israel. And we might take a bit of a back seat and say, well, it's, uh, God is angry with them, not with us. We may feel like we're off the hook. Then, you know, when there's like somebody has a conflict, and there's a conflict between others and you're not, you know, the subject of the conflict, you don't feel as bad, than when you are actually the subject of the conflict itself. But you know, none of us are off the hook. How easy it is for us to fall into religion, thinking that keeping the Sabbath and festivals and doing the religious thing is going to save us. No. Only a relationship with the Lord will save us. No amount of religious activity can do that for you. Only a relationship with the Lord and trust in in Yeshua the Messiah for your atonement and for your forgiveness. As Yeshua, as Isaiah rather said in verses 18 to 19, Come now, let us reason together, says Adonai. Though your sins be like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they will be like wool. If you are willing and obey, you will eat the good of the land. And so God's message to all of us and to the Jewish people at this time is that the temple has been destroyed. Sacrifices have ceased. There is now only one way of atonement for Jew and Gentile, and that is through faith in Israel's Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach who himself prophesied the destruction of the temple within 40 years of his own death on the cross and his atoning death on the cross for us. And so let us have a look at this uh, festival of sadness a little bit more today since uh, it is happening this evening. It's appropriate for us to think about this and to see if uh, we can bring some meaning for us today. And also help us in our own testimony and witness to our people. So according to the Mishnah, some of the earliest rabbinic writings, 
there are five calamities that befell the Jewish people on the ninth of Av. First of all, they say that the 12 spies sent by Moses to observe the land of Canaan return from their mission with a negative report on the ninth of Av. Of course, Joshua and Caleb had a positive report, but the other 10 brought a report with panic and despair. And according to the Midrash, it says that God is quoted as saying, you cried before me pointlessly, I will fix for you this day as a day of crying for the generations, alluding to the future misfortunes which occurred on the same date. So according to tradition, that date was chosen as a date where many more crying and, uh, and tears would be shed in the future. The mission also says that the first temple by King Solomon was destroyed. Of course, it was 586 BCE on this date. The second temple was destroyed by Titus and the Roman armies in 70 AD, and Jewish people killed and scattered from the land of Israel on this date. The Bar Kokhba revolt of 135 CE, which was crushed by the Romans, and over 500,000 Jewish people were killed in the city of Betar, happened on this date. One year later, 136 CE, the Roman Emperor Hadrian totally leveled the city of Jerusalem. He built a heathen temple on the site of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem was renamed as a pagan city, Aelia Capitolina. Jewish people were forbidden from entering the city. That could be the date that the real expulsion of the Jewish people helped, and we were expelled out of our holy land. Other calamities on this date include the First Crusade of 1096, the Jews being expelled from England in 1290, Jews being expelled from France in 1306, Jews expelled from Spain in 1492, all on this date, or very close to this date. Germany entered World War I in 1914 on this date. The final solution, of course, to destroy the Jewish people was approved on the 9th of Av, 1941, leading to, of course, the murder of six million Jewish people. Mass deportation of Jews from the Warsaw Ghetto began on the state in 1942. The Jewish community center in Buenos Aires was bombed on the 10th of Av, 1994. And uh, we just remembered that recently in 84, sorry, 85 Jewish people were killed. And also around this time, Israel withdrew from Gaza on the 9th of Av, 2005. However, it's really the fatal coincidence of the destruction of those two great temples that has left this ineradicable scar on the psyche and memory of the Jewish people. The late Rabbi Ronald Lebowski, who was the senior rabbi of the St. Kilda Shul, the St. Kilda Hebrew congregation, asked this question a number of years ago. And I remember reading this in the Australian Jewish News, and he said, for how long should a nation mourn a cataclysmic disaster? For normal grievous defeats and painful tragedies, a nation would mourn for a few decades until their memory would subside into a dull ache. However, the Jewish people have wept, grieved, and fasted on Tisha B'Av for 1,900 years because of the destruction of the Holy Temple. It's a little bit more now. That was written back in 1995. Rabbi Lubotsky then went on to say, as long as we don't have a temple, as long as we are unable to offer the prescribed daily sacrifices, then Jerusalem, however completely it might be reconstructed in a physical sense, still lacks its spiritual heart. The Jewish nation has never come to terms with the loss of the temple which is why, as I say, we still remember it even on the happiest of occasions. And so I completely agree. The Jewish nation has never come to terms with the loss of the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple. In fact, since the destruction of the temple, Judaism really has never been the same again since. The Judaism that we have today is very different 
from the Judaism of the Bible. Today we're going to look at a few scriptures that speak about the destruction of the temple. And I'm going to try and answer three questions. Why did God allow it to happen? Can true Judaism exist without a temple? And what are the implications for us today? So why did God allow this to happen? Let's turn to the prophet Jeremiah, who had some things to say about this. And we're going to read a few verses from chapter 7. First of all, 1 and 2. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, that's the temple, and proclaim there this word. And say, hear the word of the Lord, all you men of Judah who enter these gates to worship the Lord. So Jeremiah was told to stand at the gate of the temple, and he was probably had to do that at the busiest times, perhaps at the Shalosh Regalim, the three pilgrim festivals, when all the Israelite men from all around the world would have to come together to worship the Lord. Perhaps it was at that time he had to proclaim this message of gloom and doom for the people as they walked into the temple. I don't envy his job. Can you imagine going down to... Uh, one of the shuls around our area here, standing outside as people are going in every Shabbat and starting to proclaim to them that their religion is worthless and they ought to reform their ways. Don't accept this as a challenge. I'm not trying to challenge you to do that. <laughs> Don't try and do that. But can you imagine being given that job? I don't envy that job. <clears throat> but this was the message Jeremiah had to proclaim. Verse 3, it says... Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your deeds, and you will dwell in this place. You see, the people were very religious. They came to the temple, dressed up in their best robes. They entered the gates of the temple and thought that within these walls, they are safe. They thought, perhaps, well, they are fulfilling their religious duty. And it feels good to do that. You feel good about fulfilling religious duties. It's easy to feel that way. When you go to shul or a church, you feel like you've done your religious duty, you've been seen by the right people, and you feel good about yourself. But religion like this can be skin deep and not affect the way that you live your life, certainly for the rest of the week. But God hates religion. It's a difficult pill to swallow when I say that to people. They say, well, what work do you do? <laughs> and I say, but God hates religion. Religion or religiosity is a disease, an abomination to God. True religion doesn't actually make you feel comfortable. It challenges you to your very core. Some people say religion is a crutch. What rubbish. Religion... True religion doesn't make you feel comfortable. It challenges you. How can you be in the presence of a holy God and not feel unholy? Religion wants, pe religion wants people to feel comfortable, but that's not God's agenda for us. The people who Jeremiah had to confront were very religious, but they didn't, did not know God or follow in his ways. They trusted deceptive words. In verse 4 we read, it says there, do not trust in these deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Three times it's, he says the same thing for, uh, for a special effect. People who are saying, well, you know, when you come into the temple, you're safe. You're safe. You'll be all right. And Jeremiah constantly had a battle with false prophets Jeremiah would say on behalf of God that Jerusalem and the temple were going to be destroyed if the people don't repent and turn to God. The false prophets would come along and say, nonsense. God would not destroy this holy place. They would prophesy peace. When Jeremiah prophesied destruction, they would prophesy comfort and victory when Jeremiah would prophesy repentance or defeat. Eventually, the people got so sick of Jeremiah that they threw him into a pit and called him a traitor. No wonder Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. He never stopped crying for his people. No one believed him. 
And we have the same problem today. People are so religious, they don't want to hear the words of the Lord. They want to hear comfortable and soothing words like, oh, as long as you have faith in something, that's good enough. <laughs> or, it doesn't matter what you believe, all roads lead to God. As long as you try to be a good person, that's good enough for God. Religion always does this. It replaces a personal relationship with God with things. It could be rituals. It could be buildings. It could be liturgy and prayers. Woe to us when our religion becomes more important to us than a relationship with God. Tradition, however wonderful it might be, should never replace God. God wanted the people to live changed lives. Verses 5 to 11, he said, For if you truly amend your ways and deeds, if you truly execute justice with one another, if you do not oppress the sojourner, the fatherless, or the widow, or shed innocent blood in this place, if you do not go after other gods to your own harm, then I will let you dwell in this place, in the land that I gave of old to your fathers forever. Sounds very similar to Isaiah. Behold, you trust in deceptive words to no avail. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, make offerings to Baal, and go after other gods that you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house? which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered, only to go on doing all these abominations. Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers for, in your eyes? Behold, I myself have seen it, declares the Lord. So what about our lives? Are we outwardly religious, but inwardly cold towards God? God doesn't want us to be religious. He wants us to know him in a personal way. Now, we mustn't ever allow culture, whatever culture you have, traditions, or religion, to be more important than God himself in our lives. Don't speak nice words with one another when you have unforgiveness or anger in your heart towards them. The people of God, the people of Israel, did not heed the words of the prophets, and they did not repent of their sinfulness. In fact, they mocked the prophets, despised his words, until God had no choice but to bring judgment and destruction. And we read about this in 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 17 to 21. Therefore he brought up against them the king of the Chaldeans, who killed their young men with the sword in the house of the sanctuary, and had no compassion on young on young man or virgin, old man or aged. He gave them all into his hand, and all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and of his princes, and all these he brought to Babylon. And they burnt the house of God, broke down the wall of Jerusalem, and burnt all its palaces with fire, and destroyed all its precious vessels." He took into exile in Babylon those who had escaped from the sword, and they became servants to him and to his sons until the establishment of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed its Sabbaths. All the days that it lay desolate, it kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. And so God, of course, predicted the coming of the uh, destruction of the temple and the first exile out of Israel, the destruction of the temple and the, the exile into Babylon. God destroyed the first temple because of false religion and idolatry. The second temple, I believe, was destroyed for a different reason. It was destroyed also on the 9th of Av by Titus and the Roman armies in 70 AD. Forty years before that event, a man spoke of its destruction and prophesied that not one stone will be laid upon another. A prophecy fulfilled in such minute detail that when the temple was, was destroyed, <clears throat> the Roman soldiers pli pried apart each stone of the temple to be able to extract the gold that had melted and gone into the cracks. They pulled every rock apart as was prophesied. The man who prophesied this was no ordinary man. He was a prophet, and he was no ordinary prophet. He was the Messiah. 
He was the Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach. And Matthew chapter 13 records for us, as Yeshua was going out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, look, what stones and what buildings. Behold the beauty of the temple. It was the most magnificent temple. This was the second temple that uh, ultimately was renovated and made bigger by Herod the Great. It was a beautiful building. Yeshua said to him, You see the, these great buildings? Not one stone here will be left upon another. Everyone will be torn down. When the temple was destroyed, as Yeshua prophesied, Judaism, as it was known at that time, came to an end. Judaism was centered on the temple worship and the sacrificial system and the, medi the mediation of the priesthood. That was the core of Judaism. With the temple destroyed, something had to be done to actually keep Judaism alive, and Judaism had to be reconstructed as a religion without a temple. It was during this time that the role of the rabbis came to the fore. One great rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, was the man for the job at that time. He called together all the great Jewish sages who survived the destruction of the temple, and he called them together throughout the ravaged land to meet with him at a town in central Israel called Yavne. They became known as the rabbis of Yavne. These rabbis had to find something to replace the temple and worship of the sacrifice and the sacrifices. Using verses from the Tanakh, they replaced the temple worship and the sacrifices with prayer, repentance, and good deeds using scriptures like Psalm 51 verse 19. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. By the way, also the prayers that were, were written up were the same number of the sacrifices that were given on a daily basis. These rabbis were acting out of love, of course, and dedication to their people. They wanted to keep Judaism alive. However, can true Judaism exist without a temple, without sacrifices, without these things that were ordained and instituted by God himself in the Torah? Can true Judaism without, exist without a temple? I say no. True Judaism cannot change laws and stipulations that God himself instituted. God, in, uh, of course, Isaiah chapter 1, said, I hate your festivals, your new moons, and your Sabbath, but it's because they were coming with the wrong attitude. It wasn't the festivals and the Sabbath. It was their hard attitude that God rejected. And so I say that Judaism cannot change those laws. The Torah says in Leviticus 17 verse 11, For the life of the creature is in the blood. I've given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your lives. For it is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. In other words, without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness for sin. Rabbi Lebovsky, in that article he wrote, 1995, it says, Prayer as the officially accepted means of obtaining divine forgiveness was only a stopgap measure, in no way obviating the long term for their restoration of the sacrificial system. It was only a stopgap measure, he suggests. He admits that we still need sacrifices for the forgiveness of our sin, and prayer was only this stopgap measure measure between the destruction of the temple and the rebuilding of the third temple, according uh, to Judaism. But you know what? God is never taken by surprise. God doesn't use stopgap measures. He doesn't have plan B. God never has plan B. He only has plan A. Can you imagine God saying, you know, oi, the Romans have destroyed my temple. What am I going to do about it? Oh, they'll just have to pray until one day I'll send them the Messiah. No, God had a plan. We still need a temple today, and we still need sacrifices today. God's laws applies to all of us, Jew or Gentile, in this regard. We all need forgiveness for sin. 
We're all sinners in need of atonement, but how can we be forgiven if we don't have a Beit HaMikdash, a holy temple? The temple no longer stands, and there's no longer a place in which to do sacrifices. Nearly 2,000 years ago, of course, there lived a Jewish man called Yochanan Hamatbil, John the Baptist, who said of Yeshua as he was coming down to be baptized by John, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. Yeshua, the Lamb of God who has come to fulfill those sacrifices. Yeshua is the sacrifice that we need for the forgiveness of our sins. For he said in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We don't need a temple anymore. For Yeshua himself is, in fact, our temple. Let's read what he says about this in John chapter 2, verse 18. The, Judeans, the Judean leaders responded, What sign do you show us since you are doing these things? Destroy this temple, Yeshua answered them, and in three days I will raise it up. The Judean leaders then said to him, Forty-six years this temple was being built. That was by King Herod. And you will raise it up in three days? But he was talking about the temple of his body. So after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he was talking about this. Then they believed the scriptures and the word that Yeshua had spoken. The people thought that he was crazy to suggest that he could destroy the temple and raise it up, build it again in three days. But of course, speaking of his own body, he'd be resurrected on the third day. He died on the cross. On the third day, he, ro he rose from the dead for the forgiveness of our sins. Yeshua is our temple. We don't need a physical temple anymore. And whether a third temple or not will be built, well, we shall certainly see. And even if it is built, I suggest it won't be for the same reasons that the first and second temple would be built, was built for. That is for forgiveness of sin, because Yeshua is our final sacrifice. There will be no sacrifices for forgiveness of sin in any third temple, because Yeshua has already fulfilled that. He is our sacrifice. He is our temple. He is our kapara. And the book of Hebrews tells us he's also our great high priest. So let's summarize. The first temple was destroyed because of false religion and idolatry. The second temple was destroyed because its function had been fulfilled by the work of the Messiah on the cross. Can true Judaism exist without a temple? No. God's laws never changes and God doesn't change. We still need a sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. And that is why God provided Yeshua our Messiah. Through the death, through his death on the cross and through his shed blood we can be forgiven for our sins. So what are the implications for us today? Well, the destruction of the temple has implications for Jews and Gentiles. Forgiveness of sin can only come through God's ordained way. Not man-made instructions, not religion. That is man's way to God, but God's way to bring us to himself. That is through Yeshua the Messiah. There's only one way of salvation, and that is through a personal relationship with God, personal faith and belief in Yeshua as the Messiah. Without a personal faith in the Messiah and acceptance of what he has done for us on the cross, there can be no forgiveness of sin. That's why Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Rabbi Lebowski longed to see the temple rebuilt so that Israel can be complete. He knew that that could only happen when Messiah comes. I wish he had known that the Messiah had already come. He is our temple. And on the third day, he rose from the dead for the forgiveness of sin. He is the one who brings us into the very presence of God. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Amen? Amen. But let's have a, a moment of prayer as we pray for Israel at this time. Let's pray that no great calamity will happen at this time, that this curse will be broken, that God would bring forgiveness of sin and that he would protect his people worldwide 
And we'll pray also for, for Israel, for its northern border with Lebanon and Syria, for the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, which just recently, just on Friday, there's been um, there's been a, a IDF attack on terrorist positions in Gaza, taken out one of the leaders of Islamic Jihad. So there's possible reprisals for that. Let's pray for the IDF. Let's pray that our Jewish people also around the world would ask this question at this time when the temple has been destroyed, how can we be forgiven of our sins? And may God reveal the Messiah to them. May we even have the opportunity to share the truth of Messiah. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we do come to you in the name of Yeshua and we look back over history. We can see many calamities that have happened at this time. But Lord, we pray in your mercy and your grace that you would keep any major calamity away from our people at this time. Lord, may you command your angels concerning Israel. May you bear them up. May you bear up the Jewish people around the world, even in these days of rising anti-Semitism. Lord, may we stand in prayer, may we stand in faith, and may we stand with our Jewish people, Lord. And we pray that no calamity, no terrorist activity, no destruction of life in Israel at this time, we pray, Lord, and amongst the Jewish people worldwide. For we ask, Father, in Yeshua's name. Lord, we pray for the tensions in Gaza and around uh, the border of Gaza with Israel right now. We pray that, Lord, again, that you will keep peace on the land of Israel, that you'll give Israel and the IDF constant wisdom on how to prevent destruction, prevent bloodshed, and, and prevent terrorism and terroristic activity in Israel. Lord, I pray that you give them wisdom, protect them, each boy and girl in the army and the leadership of the army as well, Lord, in Yeshua's name. Lord, we pray for our Jewish people worldwide. Father, we ask that that day will come where they shall, as your prophet says, see me whom they, has, they have pierced and mourn for him as one mourns for an only child. Lord, we pray that that day will come soon when all Israel will be saved, when they look upon him whom they have pierced. Lord, when all Israel will be saved as they receive Yeshua the Messiah and say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we know that that time would usher in your return to this world to bring peace, to take away all crying or pain, and the old order of things would pass away. Lord, we long for that time. And we pray, Lord, reveal yourself, even in these days. And I pray that you use us, Lord, in your plan and purposes and Messianic congregations like ours around the world and ministries that are reaching out to Jewish people around the world. Lord, may you empower us and strengthen us, Lord, to get the job done before you return. In fact, perhaps you're not coming until we, have, we get that job done. And Lord, our people recognize you as the Messiah. But Lord, I pray that you would encourage us and strengthen us. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives and in and through Beit HaMashiach and Celebrate Messiah and other, thing, other ministries. Lord, we just bless you and thank you and give us courage to continue and a faith and passion to continue to trust in you. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, for your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness to us, Lord. So bless each one of us, Lord. Bless us in our lives. Help us, Lord, to be witnesses of your grace and of your love and of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. All of us, Lord. Bless us, all of us as one, with the light of your countenance. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Let's have our music team lead us in our final song. Ah, we'll have a final song in a, in a moment, but we'll have the Lord say it before that. <clears throat> so, <clears throat>
what we will do is uh, we'll stand, and as we stand and sing a song, we're going to distribute the elements of the Lord's Seder, more commonly known Christian tradition as the Lord's Supper or Communion. The bread and the wine remind us of the body and the blood of Yeshua the Messiah. He is our sacrifice. He is our atonement. We don't need a temple and we don't need a sacrifice anymore. Yeshua is that final sacrifice. We remember that as we eat the bread and drink the cup. What a wonderful day for us to have the Lord's Supper. As a reminder, even as our people mourn and grieve and fast over this period, we too can pray, we too can fast if you like, but we have the assurance of forgiveness of sin that God has provided the means of atonement for us, Jew and Gentile, and he has made us one in him. What a blessing. What a wonderful testimony that we have of what Yeshua has done for us. Amen? Amen. So you will receive bread and wine. Hold it, and we'll eat and drink together once we've all been served. Thank you.
call this the Lord's Seder because it reminds us that on the night before Yeshua was crucified, he had a Pesach Seder, a Passover Seder with his disciples. At that last supper, he took the matzah and he said that this bread is his body that has been given for us. It represents his sinless body. The matzah being without leaven, a symbol of a sinless nature, been striped and pierced for our transgressions. And so he broke it and he gave thanks. Let's give thanks together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Lechem Min HaAretz Amen After giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, take this and eat this. Do this in remembrance of me. Zotasile Zichroni Let's remember Yeshua and his sacrifice for us as we eat this matzah together. After supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the Brit Chadasha, the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. We remember Yeshua's blood shed to bring us forgiveness of sin, that final sacrifice for our sin. And for, through faith in him, we have eternal forgiveness and redemption. Let's give thanks. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hagafen Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have provided atonement for us. Blessed be your name. And now, Lord, we want to live for you. And we pray that you fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and enable us to be your witnesses on earth at this time. For the, for the sake of your glory, as we lift Yeshua higher. Blessed be your holy name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's sing. Hashem Melech. Hashem <laughs> Melech. Be <laughs> Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Yemloch, Leolam Ba'ed. Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Yemloch, Leolam Ba'ed. Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Yemloch, Leolam Ba'ed. We'll praise the name of our wicked. The name that's lifted above all Praise the name of our wicked The name that's lifted above all You are our Lord, our one and only Precious Yeshua, we give you praise You are our Lord, our one and only Precious Yeshua, we give you praise You have reigned and you still reign and you will reign forever again. For you have reigned and you still reign and you will reign forever again. For you have reigned and you still reign and you will reign forever again. 
השם מלך, השם מלך, השם ימלוך לעולם בעת. השם מלך, השם מלך, השם ימלוך לעולם בעת. אהללה השם אלוהים, נגד עלינו בתודה. השם ימלוך לעולם בעת, השם מלך, השם מלך, השם ימלוך לעולם בעת. For you have reigned and you still reign, and you will reign forever again. For you have reigned and you still reign, and you will reign forever again. השם מלך, השם מלך, השם ימלוך לעולם בעת. השם מלך, השם מלך, השם ימלוך לעולם בעת. השם מלך, השם מלך, השם ימלוך לעולם בעת. The Lord has reigned, the Lord is reigning, and He will reign forever. Amen. That's why we can step outside and have faith and hope, and uh, we don't have to fear anything. So that's what we're going to do in a few minutes. You're all uh, free to go if you want. It's the end of our service. And uh, we do have a special offering, though, we take up at the last, uh, on the first day of the, of the week, uh, first day of the month. It's our mitzvah offering. So we're going to do that in a moment. And this goes to uh, give uh, benevolence uh, to those around us who need support uh, locally. This, this mitzvah often is used for local good deeds. And so please feel free to do so now. Uh, Gina, the final, final song. <laughs> and also, after the final, final song... We're going to uh, invite a family to come and make an announcement for us. Another announcement this week. All right. But for those uh, online, thank you so much for being with us. God bless you. And you too can, uh, if you so desire, give a mitzvah offering. Just make sure you uh, clarify that on your donation, that it's for mitzvah, good deeds, or mitzvot. Okay. All right. Well... We'll have that final, final song. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, we'll take up our mitzvah offering. Thank you very much. Wonderful and great are all your works. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Full and righteous are all your ways, King of the Holy One. Who will not give praises or not fear your name for the holy works you have done? will bow down before your face, the Holy One. Holy, holy, you alone are God. Holy, worthy. 
and praise your holy name. Amen. Thank you, worship team, for leading us. Please be seated, and we're going to keep you for only a couple more minutes as we ask the Daniel, Daniel's family to come up, please. Okay, so, now you see them, and now you don't. Now you see them, and now you don't. They're here, then they're gone. Then they're here, and they're gone. So what is that all about? We, uh, we'll have asked them to please explain. This isn't putting us on the spot at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been yeah, doing a disappearing act uh, for the last couple of months. The Lord is my shepherd. Mariah showed me this picture and she was very excited to show me this picture because I haven't seen them since Thursday. Danu came here to Melbourne on Thursday and I've arrived this morning. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd. And I was pondering this as she gave it to me because it means that I go where he wants me to go, not where I want to go. And I guess this is a good message for what this is all about is because uh, it's been a while now that the Lord has led us and called us to go to Albury moved to Albury, Wodonga. And so it's with a heavy heart, but with a lot of gladness and a lot of joy uh, that we have 
slowly in the background been relocating to all. Oh, say shalom, be more mine.